to today's session. So today we are looking at the GCE Mathematics 2022 Paper 1. So let us move straight to question 1. So if you look at uh, the first three questions, we we'll start with question 1. Question 1 leads evaluate 5 to the power 3 multiply by 1 over 5 to the power 2. So to answer question 1, we're going to uh, use two key rows, laws of indices. So the first law of indices is the fact that uh, if you, we have an indices, say indice a to the power x, we multiply it by another indice a to the power y, as long as the bases, these bases, are the same, what it implies is we just add the powers. That's the first principle. The second principle is if I have 1 over a to the power x, this is the same as a to the power negative x. So these are the two key principles that we need to apply to answer question 1. So based on these two principles, 5 to the power 3 multiplied by a 1 over 5 to the power 2 is the same as 5 to the power 3. We multiply by 5 to the power negative 2. So 5 are the bases which are the same. So this implies that it's 5, 3, 5 to the power 3 plus negative 2. So what we are doing is, since the bases are the same, we just add the powers. So 3 plus negative 2 is the same as 3 minus 2, which is basically equal to 5 to the power 1. So this 5 to the power 1 is the same as just a 5. So hence here the answer is 5. So basically, this is how you answer the first question, question 1. Simple and straightforward as long as you remember these two key laws of indices and this question most of the times comes let us move to question number two so for last to move to question number two uh question number two remember question question one we found to be five so question number two is asking us to expand so expand and simplify so these ways are used interchangeably expand and simplify or evaluate so basically to answer this question we just need to remember the key laws of expansion again this is a giveaway mark so basically what we start with we start with which what is this one we multiply by this one so what we get is six two times three is is 6 then a times a is a squared which is a to the power 2 then next we move to a multiplied by this one so it becomes 2a multiplied by negative 4 so we are getting basically a negative negative 8a then next we move to this one multiplied by this one then this one multiplied by that one so we are getting basically 3 multiplied by 3a we are getting 9a then 3 multiplied by negative 4 we are getting negative 12 from this side we simplify this one and this one so 9a plus negative 8 what it means is you have 8 apples you take away you have nine apples, you take away eight apples. What are you remaining with? You remain with basically one apple. So this tells us we have six a square minus, so basically plus because we remain with one, a minus 12. So if you look at this expression, you cannot simplify it further than that. So basically, this becomes our answer, which is six a square plus a minus 12 so basically uh, this is our answer to question number two so from this we can move to question number three so if you move to question number three basically what we discover is uh, 
it says solve equation for uh, for x square equals 9x so basically this one what we need to do is this is a quadratic equation because the highest power is a 2 so the exponential or the polynomial is a 2 so what we do is basically we say 4 x square equals to 9x so we bring 9 to the left hand side so what we have is basically 4 x square minus 9x equals 0 then next is to factor out the x so when you factor out x remain with you 4x minus 9 equals 0 what this tells us is either x is equal to 0 or 4 minus 9 equals to 0 so the first aspect is x is equal to 0 or 4x minus 9 equals to 0 because if n of the two equals to 0 the answer will still be 0 or if both of them are equal to 0 the answer will still be equal to 0 so at this point it becomes 4x equals 9 we take 9 that side then we divide by 4 we divide by 4 so it means if x is equal to basically 2 1 over 4 so basically this is how you answer this question so basically what we have we have x equals to 0 or x is equal to 2 1 over 4 so basically at this point you would have six points out of 100 or six marks so basically this is how you answer the first th three questions let us move to question number four so question number four basically is asking us to shed the region uh, basically where A intersection B complement intersection C. So what this tells us basically is tells us this. So we have these three shapes. So this is A, this is B, then this is C. So we start with basically A intersection is B. A intersection B. So A intersection B basically is this region. So we are saying everything that is found in A and D, B is C, that region, the region that we shaded D, laid. Then what we are saying is this inter, what is not in this now because it's a complement, what is not in the intersection between A and B, we find intersection with e, what is in C. Okay, so we, what is outside the intersection of A and B, we find, compare it with what is not in, what is in C. So what is common among those? So basically what you notice is when you introduce intersection C, so we are going to look at C. What is in C? C is this entire thing. Then we take away what is in the intersection between A and B. We take out this region. So what we basically remain with is this region. So this region shaded blue is basically the area we are looking for. So basically we unshade this, which is a complement. So we remove this part, which we shaded initially. Then the area shaded blue is our solution. So basically this is how you deal with intersection so basically what we are saying is this the shaded region is basically a is basically c set c we take away a intersection b complement so set c then we take out what is both found in a and b okay next let us look at question number five question number five so question number five, basically, if you look at question number five, question number five is asking us factorize completely. So factorize completely. So what are we factorizing completely? Is two a b plus x y minus two a 
y minus bx. So the first thing that we need to do is collect the like terms. So we know that this term has got a and this term has got a. Okay? Then this term has got x and this term has got x. So those are like terms. Okay? So what we do is we have 2ab minus 2ay then plus xy minus b x okay so the first thing that we do is we can factor out 2 2a so 2a into 2ab will remain with a b then 2a into negative 2ay will remain with just a y okay next we have this one so this side we can factor out basically a negative x because we want this and this to be similar so what we do is negative x into into uh, this one we get basically a minus so a minus y then negative y negative x into this one we get basically a plus b so if you notice this one and this one they are basically the same so we can in fact out we can collect what is outside so we mean with 2a minus x multiply by b so this one and this one we just get one b minus y so if you see this one this one is basically the final answer so this one is our answer there okay so basically you're talking about you have 10 points out of 100 okay then let's look at question number six before we conclude today's today's part so question number six leads question number six basically leads a company declares annual dividend of six percent the value of each share is 25 kwacha mr mapesa has 500 shares find his annual dividend so for us to find the annual dividend which is dividend annual dividend we call it ad we need to know the number of shares yes then we multiply by number of shares we multiply by the price per share then we multiply by dividend per share which is the percentage so this is price per share then multiplied by dividend percentage which is six percent so in this case mr mapesha has 500 shares then each share is worth 25,000 kwacha then he gets the dividend of six percent on each share so he gets a dividend of six percent on each share so basically what you notice is if you multiply uh 500 multiplied by 6% what you are saying is basically we move because 6% is basically 0 0.06 so we are going to move this decimal place three times so we get a 5 okay then this 5 multiplied by 6 then multiplied by 25 so what we are getting is a 3 30 multiplied by 25 so if you multiply 3 by 25 is 75, 75 multiplied by 10, we get a 750 kwacha. So we're assuming that this amount is in kwachas. So basically, that's 750 kwacha by assumption. Assuming that this is in kwachas. So basically, this is how you answer the first six questions of the exam to get the 12 points. So join us in the second part where we'll continue from question 7 to question uh, 12.